Dr. Chosky, about your historic career path toward public health leadership, including what motivated you to seek public service as part of your journey. Uh, well, thank you so much, Dr. Webb Hooper. Um, if it's okay, I'll, I'll call you Monica in part because I'd like to call Vivek um, Vivek. Uh, and I, I just want to start by saying I'm um, I'm particularly honored to be a part of this conversation um, for the Vivek Morthy uh, Distinguished Lecture Series um, during this amazing month to celebrate uh, Asian Americans, Native Hawaiians, and Pacific Islanders. Um, and thank you for opening up, you know, the question with uh, the chance to share share a few things that are a bit personal. And you know, I guess I'll start by saying um, that I I consider myself a public servant uh, even before I was a doctor, and that's because um, I had a few experiences, you know, early in my career uh, that um, that propelled me on this path and that really inspired me, particularly because of the people, you know, the leaders that I met, um, who I thought were uh, were trying to shape a better world for all of us. So I'll just share a little bit about, you know, two of those experiences. Uh, the first was at the turn of the century, you know, when we were in the throes of another pandemic, the HIV AIDS pandemic. Um, and I remember uh, going to places like India, you know, where uh, all of my extended family still lives or uh, to parts of Sub-Saharan Africa or Southeastern Asia. Um, and seeing that these miraculous medicines, antiretrovirals, which had completely changed the nature of uh, HIV AIDS in the United States were not actually getting to the places where they were most needed. Um, and this was something that uh, was um, very dismaying to me as a young, you know, idealistic person, particularly someone who believed so strongly in uh, the power of science and innovation to have created these medicines in the first place. You know, they were um, uh, they were said to have a so-called Lazarus effect in terms of bringing people back, you know, from the brink of death. And yet we as a society couldn't um, figure out how to get it, get them to the places where they were most needed. And so, you know, my lesson from that experience was that um, science and innovation are not enough. And it's really about access and uh, solving a different type of problem, um, a human problem, uh, to, to get them where they were most needed. And then the second experience was uh, where I was, um, where I grew up in Louisiana, which um, which was hit by uh, the natural disaster, Hurricane Katrina um, in 2005. Uh, and my first experience in public health really was at the health department, both before and after Hurricane Katrina. Um, and I saw in a very visceral way, you know, how, um, how disasters, whether it's a pandemic or a hurricane, uh, how they most affected people who were already living on the margins um, and caused uh, those people to be further marginalized. Um, I saw this with my family members, with my friends, you know, the people who I had grown up with uh, during Hurricane Katrina. And so for both of those experiences, um, you know, it was very clear to me that that government was um, was a uh, a potential force for good. And don't get me wrong, I saw ways in which government um, dropped the ball and was not able to deliver on its promise. But it was very clear to me that to take on those issues around moving from innovation to access, as well as um, addressing uh, equity, particularly for people who are already living on the margins, um, that public service would be um, would be a big part of that. And the last thing I'll say to just fast forward to, you know, more of the present day is that um, you know, when I had the privilege of serving as New York City's health commissioner, I loved the feeling of getting up every morning and knowing with crystal clear um, conviction what my purpose was. And my purpose was simply to uh, try to save lives and prevent suffering each day. And I don't think there are too many jobs where you get to do that, where you know that ultimately, um, you know, whether it's emails and meetings and PowerPoints and all of the other things that we do in our day-to-day -day of work, 
um, that ultimately they have to serve uh, this, um, you know, this noble purpose. Uh, and for me, that was that was so motivating and continues to be.